Welcome to another edition of NYCFC Meets. I mean, enjoy. Let's start the meeting and see if our next guest is ready. Sebastian Viaga, thank you so much for joining me. First and foremost, I've got to ask you, how are you doing during this difficult time? I'm doing well, you know, just trying to keep active, trying to keep the mind going and the body going. So, I mean, it's a little tough, but I mean, our team has done a good job with sending out activities and runs and trying to keep us fit as possible during this time. Okay, so talk us through that then. How do you as a professional athlete keep yourself fit and healthy going through this period in time? Well, the most positive thing is that we went through preseason already. So it's more about just maintaining our fitness. And that's a lot easier than trying to become fit again. So, I mean, a lot of responsibility has been put on us to actually do those. So once the season does start back up, we can just get right into it and kind of get pushing on those gears that we were when we had to stop. So where do you feel like you are then? You say you're maintaining fitness, but surely if you're not kicking the ball around with your teammates, you can't play in games, like where are you compared to match fitness? I know you have to go through a full preseason, which you guys have done, but then yeah. now you've had this long period of time of a break where you're not with your teammates. Where are the fitness levels and what needs to happen for you to get back to full match fitness? Uh, I mean, I'd say the fitness levels are definitely lower than match fitness or what you would want for match fitness. But at the same time, it's just all about getting us back together whenever that is, once, you know, all this is quieted down and everyone's healthy and everything else is safe. Uh, it's just more about getting back into that environment and just kind of going at it again. And I think that's that's the easy part in that sense is as long as we do maintain our fitness, getting back to game fitness will not be that hard. What do you miss most about training and playing games? Uh, I think just the competitiveness. I think that's the biggest thing for me is just, you know, when tempers run high, people start cursing, yelling at each other. That's the big thing that I miss. What has been the uh, instruction from head coach Ronnie Dyla? Because it's tough for him. He's just coming to a new club. He's trying to put his own ideas into your minds. Then you have this Major League Soccer suspension. It's difficult for him. But So what's he saying to you guys right yeah. now? Uh, I think he's a big preacher on being collective and being together, <laughs> although we have to be apart. Uh, I think that's his big thing. I, with all the training and stuff going on, he's kind of put a big effort into getting us together on whether it's Cisco, whatever form of media or texting, calls, just getting us all together and interacting with each other like we would every day in the locker room. So yeah. I think that's the biggest thing he's trying to do is get that togetherness and keep it going through this time how often are you communicating with one another uh, i mean with the whole team or well, with certain people on the team almost every day just talking about random stuff yeah. stuff like that and i mean i'm big into video games so i we kind of have like a little crew with brad uh louise keaton gets on a couple times uh jp as well so i mean some guys get on there so we can chat about whether it's soccer, random stuff like that, that's another outlet that we have. It's pretty cool to have that connection with one another, whether it be video games or music. I know a lot of the guys are playing music themselves or I know Matt yeah. has been drawing and things like that. That's pretty cool. Now, playing football, obviously, it's what we do. It's our profession. It's our passion. And I've been there myself. And leaving soccer was very difficult for me. Do you think there will be a new appreciation from many players who have had this break now, when they thought they were going into a regular season, they've been told, stop, you can't do this now. Do you think there'll be a new appreciation that everybody's just going to have this new lease of life once you do get going again? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I've already felt it now. It's kind of like, before I used to go to training and not really do anything with my day. Now it's, I really have nothing to do with my day. And it's just kind of like, wow, all those hard, grueling training sessions where I'm like, oh, like I'm so tired, like, why do I keep doing this and all that kind of stuff, you know, grinding those out. It, I guess I've learned to love it and I forgot that I do love it just because it's been happening every day. This break really brings that into perspective to look at as big a picture. And it's like, wow, like I've worked so hard to do this. It's been taken away by, you know, something that no one has control over, but it's just kind of incredible how much weight and how much passion that I personally have for soccer and I guess I think everyone else would kind of realize that when they come back too. 
I love that answer, man. It makes me miss the game just that little bit more being around there, smelling yeah. the, the fresh cut grass, just being out there with yeah. the hot dogs and the beers inside the stadium. That's what we all miss. That's all, that's what we all can't wait to get back to. Let's get into your career personally. You started off at the Dynamo Academy, then decided to go over yeah. to Europe. You ended up coming back after a few years and you played in the USL where you were named USL Defender of the Year. How was that experience for you? Because... It's a difficult career. Trying to break into the big leagues is not easy. Yeah. But being named Defender of the Year in the USL is quite an achievement. How was that experience for you? Uh, I would say good and bad. I think just because of how, I guess, it happened. You know, when I came back from uh, Denmark into Houston, I was, you know, I was ecstatic. I was like, oh, I'm going back to the team that like, I played in the academy with, all this. You know, hopefully, it, obviously, I knew at that time I would not be a starter by any means. But I was like, hopefully, I can put in minutes and you know help the team. Unfortunately, I didn't get any minutes with them and went on loan. So I was kind of angry in that whole scenario. And then once I went to the USL, I was still very angry at you know just I guess my path, you know, because it's not what I wanted or not what I thought would happen. Yeah. So I kind of had a big chip on my shoulder going into that year. And, you know, my coach, who was uh, Darren Powell at the time, was like, I mean, you could easily get back to MLS. You just have to put in the work. And I was just like, yeah, like, I, I'm not worried about that. That's what I'm here to do is to this is this is a pit stop for me in that sense. And that's kind of where my mentality was that whole year. And I just played extremely angry and <laughs> somehow ended up with USL Defender of the Year and just kind of kept it going. It's pretty cool. I mean, I play angry myself, uh, Seb, so yeah. I know exactly where you're coming from. And <laughs> for us defenders, it's pretty easy to do. Um, you get yeah. your opportunity in 2018 to join NYCFC on preseason. Um, and you sort of surprised everybody. Um, they knew you were good. They didn't realize how good you were. But what was that like for you, knowing that you didn't have a contract going into preseason with a lot of hope? It was a bit intimidating in the sense that I think there was only three of us that didn't have contracts at the time. Two had been drafted. Oh, no, those four. Sorry, two had been drafted, and two was actually another defender that played in the USL with me that year before. And so it was a bit, I wouldn't say awkward because I've been on trial before, but I didn't know where I stood within those four. So it wasn't like, oh, like we're keen on signing you, but we just want to see you and see that. It was just kind of like, hey, you played well last year. Come in and see how you do. And but I also think like that helped because I didn't really have to ever think too much, you know, it was just like, just play, yeah. you know, and, and I think Patrick did a very good job of making me feel comfortable enough in the training sessions and every day to just kind of express myself and just play to my best ability. Now you've had three coaches in three different seasons. <laughs> Is that difficult yeah. for you as a defender? I mean, I played for 14 years and I never experienced anything like that. Um, I don't think so. I think it's a little easier as a defender because, I mean, your job technically doesn't really change mm -hmm. in that sense. Obviously, how you build up and how all those other things do change, but that's, I think, at our level, easy to kind of adapt to. But as a defender, I think it's kind of easy, or as a center back, I just say, because I know for outside backs, it's completely different. Yeah. But for, as a center back, I mean, at the end of the day, you're judged on your defending majority of the time. And that's what we or what we need to excel at. So it is a little bit crazy, but I don't think it's really had too much of an effect. All right, let's fast forward. it. You've played 50 games now for NYCFC in Major League Soccer. That's a great achievement over a couple of years and uh, Major League Soccer suspension year. Um, <laughs> are we seeing the best of you or is there more to come? Uh, I think there's more to come. I don't think out of those 50 games, I've been as consistent as I want to be. And that's just me kind of being honest with myself. I think and in some games I have played well and others I haven't. And a big thing for me or a big thing that I preach is just consistency. And my goal is to be as consistent as I can be every single game, no matter what, whether it's just five minutes, 10 minutes, or doesn't really matter how much time I'm in that game. And so I, I would always like to think that the best is yet to come out of me. That's great. I love to hear that. I would actually disagree at some point because last year, 2019, I thought we, we saw a very consistent 
Seb, out on the field there. You looked like you were enjoying yourself. That aggression was there. That passion was there. Did you feel like you were in the zone at certain periods last year? Yeah, no, for sure. I, I think 2019 was my best year so far, uh, 100%. I think that second year literally, or allowed me to really, you know, come into who I am on the team. And I think I filled my role really well. I was comfortable with all the guys. And you kind of get... I'm not going to say loose with the guys, but it becomes a little comfort zone where, you know, they know what I can provide and I'm going to do that hundred percent. They know that no matter what. And I think that's kind of the main thing is knowing what you will get out of each player at all times. And I think guys on our team know what they will get out of me. And sometimes it may not be up to par, but they know at the end of the day that I'm going to get that job done. I think it's safe to say that there's competition for every single spot on the team. And there is a very, high level of player in the club right now how competitive does it get for training sessions when you know people are fighting to try and get in the starting 11 i mean it's very competitive and i think that's what dave and ronnie have done really well with the player selection i think it provides us i mean the fact that nobody's safe makes it competitive just as a foundation and from that you start seeing people's levels just grow and grow and grow. And you're just like, oh, well, okay, if I even want to get in starting 11 now, I have to push myself even further, whether that's physically, tactically, technically, what, mentally, whatever those aspects are. And as a whole, we all kind of just elevate our game every time. And so it's it's great. I think it's a great thing to have. I know Domi used to say it all last year. He's like, I don't know who to play. Like He'd come up to me and apologize for not starting me. And I'm like, look, as long as we get three points, I could. I don't care in the sense that if that's the guy you pick, that means he is playing at a higher level, and that's who I would want on the field as well. Yeah, I mean, I can see that in your personality. You're always one of the very friendly players, very welcome, and when we speak outside and around the stadium, and it's not easy for any coach. I can imagine at NYCFC it's very difficult with the talent that's uh, available to the head coach. Around New York right now, it's very difficult for a lot of people and fans who are watching on right now, they love the club. They miss you guys a lot. Do you have a message for your fans out there who are watching on? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I think that just as much as you miss us and you miss me, I miss all of you guys. And I think the best thing to do for us is to stay safe and practice all the social distancing because we want to see you guys in the stadium and we want to hear you guys and have you guys by our side again. And we will be back soon. Awesome. Seb, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Ian. Always a pleasure.